All right, well, this is a 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E GT Performance that I'm driving today. And I realized now that this is my first time driving a non-Tesla EV, except for a couple of like test drives that I did. So I've got this car for the day. I am taking it out of Las Vegas, out into the desert uh, to Valley of Fire State Park. And hope you'll stick with me as we get to learn a little bit about this car and test it out. So stay tuned. All right, so I haven't really been able to get too much into like the performance driving of this car yet. I've just been on the highway, but so far I am finding it quite nice. It is nice and comfortable in here. I find the seats, um, which are a little bit like bolstery, uh, to be quite comfortable. Uh, they're not as like, I'd say like plush, I guess, as uh, the Tesla ones, but still quite comfortable. Uh, very supportive and I don't feel like I'm gonna feel fatigued at all from sitting in here driving for a couple hours the overall like fit and finish of this car I actually quite like I feel like the you know it's, it's not like it's super luxurious or anything this is definitely more tailored toward like a, I guess I would say you know more, more like a kind of performance e feel but the overall like materials and stuff are, are really nice. It doesn't feel super Spartan in here. Between the uh, two screens that you've got up here, the one in front of the steering wheel and the, the like big tablet one in the middle, and then the uh, overall like trim that is down here, uh, it, it feels quite nice and uh, not like busy, but like that there's enough you know stuff going on and some good thought put into it. You got like this nice sort of uh, leather ready. Uh, trim with like stitching here, um, sort of like a meshy fabric elsewhere, and overall just quite nice. One thing I don't like about this though is, this one in particular is uh, no sunroof, so it doesn't feel claustrophobic or anything, but I just feel like, uh, for me at least, I would certainly prefer to have one with the sunroof where it makes it feel a little bit bigger. bigger. Um, Overall, like feel and everything, uh, definitely feels very well put together. I'm not like noticing any rattles or creaks or anything like that. And it's actually fairly quiet, I'd say, in here. You get a little bit of road noise from the uh, tires, but really not hearing much like wind noise at all. So I'd say this is probably pretty close to like what I get in my Model Y. It's not dead silent, there's not like active noise cancellation or anything in here, but it is certainly quieter than a com internal combustion engine car, and I don't feel like I need to yell to be heard or anything like that. So I do really like having this big screen in front of me here. Yeah, actually, it's actually yeah, no, I don't know the sunroof there. All right, we'll show it like this. So. Having this screen here is quite nice. So it's in portrait orientation, which is a little bit just different, I guess, than, uh, than in the Tesla. But you also have this one here for the, uh, right in front of the steering wheel, which is nice because uh, it's got all of the sort of driving information that you need. So you don't have to keep glancing back and forth. But um, yeah, but this is quite nice. And I uh, just like how kind of simple it is, but like has all of the right information that you would need. And then over here, you've got all of your like media and navigation, uh, climate control kind of stuff. All right, so while I'm talking about uh, all of the stuff going on here on the screens, you should actually show it as we're driving. So yeah, here's the screen that is showing all of our like driving information. All right, and so here, watch this, I'm gonna change lanes, basically I put the turn signal on, it lets me take control, do this as slowly as I want, and then I get over here, and there we go. Okay. That one took a little extra second, but there you go, and it just takes control again. So I'm really liking that system, seems quite good. And 
and yeah, I feel like this would be much nicer on like a long highway drive because you don't have to like constantly keep putting it back on and off again. I'm so sick of that ding ding song uh, sound that the, the Tesla autopilot system makes like every time you turn it off and back on. And then I uh, like the, the navigation that they got here. So this is the built-in one, like without using your phone or anything. So it shows you, you know, traffic conditions and closures and everything. Um, it even shows you or um, like gives you information about all the chargers and everything. So on its own, that's pretty good. This does like automatic charger routing too. So if I put in a further away destination, it would you know, figure that out and calculate it for me. All right, yeah, I am just very excited to be driving this car for a little bit of an extended period today because I actually have one of these. Oh, well, not, not this one exactly. I have a premium uh, trim version, not the GT. But it will have a sunroof and it's the extended all wheel version. So still gonna be quite good. And I saw that it was actually built recently. So it looks like I'm probably gonna be able to take delivery of it in the next few weeks. So this is a great little test out to see whether or not we're actually gonna do that or not. Um, because it is a refundable deposit and the used car prices for well, overall, but for Tesla in particular, uh, have gone down quite a bit recently. So our plan was to resell the Model Y and replace it with this, but we have to figure out now if that actually makes economic sense or not, or if we want to just have this as our second car and get rid of the other one that we have. So testing this all out today is certainly gonna help a little bit with that. So far I quite like the way that this drives. I haven't like floored it to see, you know, how kind of how it maxes out on performance, but um, uh, I'll do that like once I get kind of onto the more fun twisty turny roads by the state park. And overall, yeah, just nice, comfortable place to be. I like this. I would say overall, the use of technology and stuff in here is quite great. Having wireless CarPlay is, is a, in my opinion, a huge step up from what Tesla has just with their built-in stuff. I mean, Tesla's is good and all, but uh, I just, I like being able to use my own mapping and listen to my own music and podcasts and audiobooks and stuff. So I really like having that flexibility here. And um, yeah, I've been playing with the, the, the hands-free driving, uh, which has lane keep assist and distance control. So I mean, it's very similar to, to autopilot. Um, this one, I guess, doesn't have Blue Cruise, which is the like full hands-off one on mapped roads, where it uses um, IR to see uh, to detect that you're like actually looking at the road. So I have to keep my hands on the wheel here. So it's basically the same as like Tesla, but it's been working very well. Uh, it keeps you in the lane fine. Uh, it's actually keeping a more uh, New Jersey friendly, I'll say, distance to the cars in front, meaning like I can actually get closer than in the Tesla, which is good for like in traffic and um, when the roads are congested and stuff. So I'm liking that. And what I really like, um, absolute favorite thing here is that the when you go to um, change lanes, you just put the turn signal on, it lets you uh, take back over control. And as soon as you get into the other lane, you just kind of like take your hands off and it is you know back engaged and everything. So it's a little bit more seamless, I'd say, than uh, what Tesla has with autopilot, where it's like you turn autopilot on and you're just like locked into that. And you basically have to like shut it off if you want to do anything outside of what it wants to do. Whereas with this, it is sort of more of like a supplemental or like a companion thing. Like it is, is, is more of like an assistance, I guess I would say, rather than like trying to replace you as a driver entirely. I will say it is having a little bit of a hard time here on this uh, kind of like construction here where the lane markings are not very good. I'm trying to think, I think, you know, I think probably Tesla would be actually fine here. It is a little bit confusing because like we're basically driving on what should be the shoulder, but um, there are you know, additional lane markings here. So it's a little bit confusing because there's an extra like lane marker in the middle of the lane. And it has been kind of going back and forth a little bit between those like hunting for the, the actual middle of the lane. And I think Tesla would have, uh, their system would have handled that a little bit better. But now that we're back on 
how the road is supposed to be. It's uh, much, much better. All right, let's see. We gotta do a little bit of an acceleration here because the speed limit just went up by 20 miles an hour. So let's see how this goes. All right, one, two, three. Ooh, I like the <laughs> noise. Very spaceshipy. All right, I mean, that was good acceleration, but not, uh, not super thrilling, I would say. But yeah, so I can, like, I can just go do that and basically drive on my own and I didn't have to turn off the driver assistance at all. It just like picked it immediately back up when I uh, kind of let, let it <laughs> go again. Okay, so range for this, I think the like rated uh, um, range is about 250, if I, if I remember right in the GT. And that would make sense. I think it, it was at 100% when I picked this up, but uh, we're at 89% now and we're showing 220 miles. In the premium trim, it should be like in the 270-ish range, maybe a little, tiny bit more, between 270 and 275. And from everything I've read and what I'm seeing so far, it seems like Ford actually does a really good job of delivering to their estimates on uh, on the range. Unlike Tesla that tends to overstate them or kind of give you like absolute best case optimistic scenario that doesn't actually hold up in the real world. Whereas this seems to be a little bit more uh, conservative and like based off of what the car can actually do. All right, so in terms of like overall roominess and stuff in here. So here you have the front seat and then in the back there, so that's it, you know, this is very comparable to the Model Y. I bet the total dimensions, I think, are, are probably almost uh, exactly the same here. You have about the same amount of headspace, the uh, same width here. The middle seat there is you know, fairly decent size. Like I think, you know, if you had three adults back there, you'd be quite tight, but for kids, definitely plenty of room. Uh, that middle seat there, uh, you know, obviously isn't like a full seat, so there's no latch system there for a car seat, but I think you could definitely fit three across here, uh, like we do in our Y, and it would be pretty much the same kind of fit, so it seems pretty similar. And then, you know, I like that it has this pass-through there, uh, especially for us skiers, and we can even access the very back through the hatch there. So, uh, pretty roomy back there, I'd say. I think, you know, certainly a car you'd be comfortable in with two people for a, a fairly extended road trip and three could certainly hold out back there for a uh, you know, short to medium term one. I don't think you'd want to be back there more than an hour or so, but you could definitely make it work. And yeah, I mean, I think, you know, overall, like kind of feel of this and stuff, it's, um, I'd say like, you know, it's kind of a step below like super luxury. It doesn't feel like a, you know, BMW or... Audi or Mercedes or anything in here, but uh, you know it's, this isn't like directly competing with those either. This is this is a little bit more of like a kind of performance enthusiasty uh, type car, and um, you know I think like materials and stuff are all nice. The only thing is like the you know, it is like a little bit uh, lacking some of the more luxury features. Like there's no um, seat massager, there's no um, air conditioned seats or anything like that. Uh, it does have heated seats though and heated steering wheel, so that's good. But uh, I think if you're you know, comparing this to like a European luxury EV, uh, there are a few things missing from here versus this. All right, well, I'm driving through the desert here and it's just me, the Mach-E, and tumbleweeds as far as the eye can see. But I've been pretty impressed that the uh, driver assistance system is doing pretty well on this road, which is not really like the uh, best maintained road in the world. It's kind of washed out and stuff, so uh, it has been doing quite well. So I'm actually going to shut that off though and just drive it because I want to actually start looking at the driving characteristics a little bit more here. So one thing that I noticed immediately is, so I'm all the way down in the, like, the absolute lowest seating position, which still feels a little bit high to me. Um, I mean, I've you know, plenty of headroom here, but um, kind of just compared to like the windshield, I feel like my eyes are about 
80% toward the top rather than like being closer to the middle like they uh, like I would prefer. So that's a little bit interesting. It's not really affecting things too much, just kind of different than what I'm used to. But yeah, so let's see. All right, we got some just turn here. Let's, let's play with this. Yeah, I mean, so the acceleration I'd say is good, but not insane. Um, it uh, it's got you know good pickup and everything. Like it, it is quite responsive. Um, you know, actually, I'm in. Let me see. So I am in engage mode, which is sort of like the default one. Let me do unbridled and see how that changes things. All right. Oh yeah. So that okay. All right. That makes a difference. The uh, throttle response is much. Um, tightened up by doing that. So there's like, yeah, I mean, now, now it's kind of, I barely have to like move my toe basically to get a lot more. And it's certainly, oh yeah, it's tightened up the, the steering wheel quite a bit too. Okay, so that, that makes a difference. So if you want to drive it kind of and feel, you know, more excited in, in everything you use Unbridled. Uh, so you have Whisper, Engage, and Unbridled. Whisper is like the kind of, you know, chill or eco kind of mode to help extend maximize range and it's going to give you like sort of the you know least jerky acceleration and everything engage is sort of like your middle you know standard one and then unbridled is like the uh, you know enhanced kind of more performance oriented one so yeah with with unbridled um this road is actually now become quite a bit more fun so let's see i'm gonna do not really a launch but kind of like a like a 20 to oh yeah okay oh well, that there we go okay that feels that feels good i like that that's pretty uh pretty exciting doesn't compare to the plaid that i just drove but compared to the y it's it's pretty similar so i'm glad that unbridled actually makes that much of a difference because when i was driving engaged to be honest it was a little bit uh tame and ped pedestrian to me so this is much more fun yeah and now all right we got some turns coming up so let's see how this thing handles and how it deals with coming through these corners a little bit more aggressively. Okay. I didn't hit that one quite fast enough to really feel it. Some bigger ones coming here. Alright, we got a little bit of a dip. Let's see how we handle with suspension. Okay, yeah, nothing at all. That just eat that straight up. Alright, now. Let's see. Alright. I hit this one hard. Alright, yeah, we got. Okay, yeah, a little bit understeer there. Um, but very easily handled. Didn't feel like we were coming anywhere close to the limit or anything like that. No tire squeal or any sort of drama like that. So, stayed pretty well planted. We had a tiny bit of, like, body roll there, but I didn't feel like it was. You know, causing us to like lose any grip or anything like that. Right, that's that's okay, yeah, that one, yeah. I handled that very well. I, I didn't feel like we were even understeering all that much there. So, definitely handles quite well. I would say this actually, in terms of like body roll, this is actually slightly better than the Model Y. Model Y, so I have a long range, not performance Model Y, and the thing just feels high uh, to me, and when you go around a turn, it, it just, um, you know, it still stays like very well planted to the ground and everything, you're not feeling like you're gonna, you know, lose contact with the, the ground or anything, but it definitely has a lot of body roll, whereas this, I'm really not feeling that too much, this feels a bit more connected. Very cool scenery here, though, coming through these these mountains. We're gonna keep an eye out for big horn sheep. Yeah. Oh, I really just I like how it feels in unbridled. It feels uh, more more Tesla like. All right, let's see on the regen. So I'm on L, which is kind of the the high regen braking, um, like more one pedal driving kind of uh, feeling. And let's see if I just. Accelerate and then take my foot entirely off the accelerator. Okay, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it'll bring you all the way to the stop, but. Yeah. Okay, well, let me launch. 
Ooh, no, it does not like that. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> Alright, don't put your foot on both both pedals at the same time. Yeah, so the regen, not not quite as like intense as the, the Tesla one, I'd say. Like even kind of in the standard setting. So, I mean, you know, it, it is good. I can see like it's putting a good amount of energy back into the, the battery, but it, you know, I was, I was finding that it wasn't quite as easily usable like when you're, you know, in traffic and coming up to stoplights and stuff. I think you have to give it a little bit more uh, space to bring you to a complete stop than you Arriving do. Arriving at Valley of Fire uh, State Park, w now heading into Valley of Fire State Park, which I quite like. It's only like an hour from Vegas, so quite easy to get to. And I mean, you see not a lot of crowds and stuff here. We're pretty much the only ones here. Yeah, so from a performance driving experience, I, I like this. I think it feels good. It's not, it doesn't feel like a sports car or something, but it feels better than your you know, typical SUV. So this is fun. I like it. Feels good. The, you know, my main criteria for performance driving in a car is, you know, does it feel safe if I'm driving a little bit aggressively? And also just, is it fun? Does it put like a smile on my face? And um, yeah, there are aspects of this that I definitely... my first hike, probably the only one, but we'll say, of Valley of Fire State Park. I'm going to the Fire Wave Formation, which is a formation of rocks that have these sort of like striation waves of different colors in them. So it looks like there's kind of like waves of fire going through them because they're primarily like red and orange and yellow. Oh yeah, so it's off pretty cool with just this giant rock formation here. Looks like we can go kind of over and around it, and then I think on the other side is where the uh, fire wave formation is. Yeah, this is a nice way to start off a hike. Beautiful view. Just feels like you're out in the middle of nowhere. It's nice to have kind of the quiet and solitude today. A busy, hectic week. All right, well, I am here at the end of the Fire Wave Trail, and you can see all around are these fire waves in the rocks. So, I don't know exactly how that's created, but I believe it is partially from the uh, sedimentary rock formation like basically creates these layers as things got pressed down down and down and formed into rocks uh, over the eons and also partially due to the wind erosion here which is why there's so much sand but that creates these formations and it was a fun little hike it was pretty fast I think yeah, it only took me 20 minutes to get to the end here, so definitely overestimated that it would take an hour for the whole thing, unless it's much worse going back up, but I didn't feel like we were coming down all that much, so I don't think it's going to be super strenuous. So we're going to head back now, and I think that actually gives me enough time to do another hike too, so I'm going to figure that out on the walk now. I might go head back to White Dome, do some hiking there. I just want to drive around the park a little bit more too while I have the mucky. All right, well that hike only took me 35 minutes, so I must have been power walking or running or something. But yeah, I wanted to show off the exterior of the Maki a little bit. So there have been a lot of motorcycles going by here, so sorry if that happens, but it's quiet right now. So yeah, I think it's a pretty good looking car. I mean, it, you know, it's definitely more of an SUV than a sedan or a sports car. But I still think, you know, between the, the lights and sort of the overall cut here, um, makes it, you know, a little bit more sporty than, you know, kind of other like comparable SUVs. I do not love these wheels, to be honest, uh, but I think those are unique to the GT, so uh, be different ours. And I think you know it just looks cool. I like I, I like how it doesn't have door handles. You just have it here. So the way that this works is you just push the button, 
and I've got the key in my pocket, so it's going off of that, but you can also do it with your phone through the app. And basically that just kicks it out and when you pull on this little handle here to open it up. And the cool thing is there's actually like a little physical kickstand here. So once that's out, you can't push it in to like, and like pinch your fingers or anything like that. It does not disengage until you have it all the way there. Right, and then let's open up the phone. I don't know if you can do it with the key or not. Let's see. So here's the key. So, no, it doesn't look like you can do it on the key. Probably we would have a button here. Let's see. And yeah, two times. And there you go. Oh, yeah, that's a nice size frunk. You got quite a bit of space there. And then see, it's even got a little like drain hole there. So you can actually put like ice and liquids and stuff in here. And then if you somehow manage to trap yourself in here, I guess, which I don't know how that would work, but um, I think this is legal mandate. You've got this button here that'll pop it open. So that's a decent size uh, frunk. You can, you know, fit a duffel bag or two in there. And yeah, here's the charge port. So here's J1772 and there's the pins for, for the DC fast charging on CCS. This will even like show you the, the charge that you got and everything. So we'll test that out a little bit later. And look at that horsepower and your Mustang guy. So a couple of little nods there to the Mustang brand. And check out the trunk too, shall we? While we're out here. I like that it is a powered trunk. So got my bag in here, but you can see a lot of space here. And oh I was wrong, so there is no pass through here. So you can't do golf clubs or skis. That's just like I guess an armrest back there. But yeah, you've got this space and then let's see. Underneath here, yeah, this I guess comes out. Uh wedged in there. I think it's not supposed to be done that far, but looks like I'd have to move the seats to move it. But you've got some more space under there too, so. Let's room. 12 volts. Yeah. So, I think we need an power close. All right, so I've got to figure out how to close the front, but thus completes the tour of the outside. Nice place to do it. All right, this is the White Dome Trail which is 1.2 miles, also supposed to take about an hour. And you go through these big white dome rock formations at the beginning. And there's a slot canyon, the largest one in the park, in the middle of it. And apparently this spot in the park is very popular for movie filming. So a bunch of movies have been filmed here and there's like parts of the sets that are still here. This is quite cool. This is the Slot Canyon part of the trail. And let's be honest, who doesn't love a good Slot Canyon? Oh, it's much colder in here than out in the sun. Alright, so I do find it a little bit odd that you have to push this power button to actually start the car when you get in. A lot of other EVs forego that and just are immediately drivable. But it's not a big deal, I guess. And then gear shift knob, knob is interesting. You have this like dial that you turn, so park, reverse. And then you have drive and you can push this button and go into low, I guess, which is for uh, high regen. But yeah, I like the camera seems pretty good on here, the backup camera. Ooh, all right, well, it got very hot, so got the air gun. All right, so we're going to go ahead to another ooh, part of the park, do a little, little bit more hiking, a little short trail, and we can get back on the road and do a bit more driving and some charging. All right, so we're back to driving through 
Valley of Fire now. Here in our Maki. And I'm back in unbridled mode because I want to enjoy this. And I definitely am. I, this car is uh, is making me happy. It's I think it is uh, maybe like a little bit less striking than a Tesla, but uh, from the outside at least. But I think on the inside, I, I generally like what they've done. All right, we are driving through the park, heading out the other way now. We're taking a long way back to Las Vegas so that we can get a little bit more time in the car here. And beyond the beautiful scenery, I am really just enjoying the, the mach -E here. I've been very comfortable driving around. It's uh, gotten pretty hot out. It says it's only 65, but uh, we're out in the desert and with the sun just kind of beating down on you, it feels a lot hotter. So I was working up a sweat on the hike and now I'm nice and cooled down in here, so climate works well. And just am finding the driving experience here to be quite good too. It um, is very well tuned. In unbridled mode, it is just really fun to drive, kind of fling around the corners and stuff here in the, in the park. And I'm just having a wonderful time uh, driving through here. It's beautiful. And now that I've gone into unbridled mode, I've realized that, you know, this really is no slouch as far as the acceleration and performance goes. It is very responsive. And uh, it really does just uh, launch. All EVs really do give you that rapid acceleration, just like instant torque. But I think, you know, this one, they've done a good, Ford has done a good job of making this feel like a fun car and kind of maintaining, you know, some of that Mustang feel. It's not like this is a muscle car, but, you know, definitely plays homage to one. And it's just making me happy and smile driving it around. I haven't had anybody, like, stop me or ask me about it or anything yet, but I think maybe once we get out of the park and especially to the charging station, wouldn't be surprised. And yeah, we're just driving through what do you call this? Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote country, I think. This is pretty cool here. We're in Lake Mead Recreational Area now. We just took the long way back to Las Vegas instead of going straight, going kind of around. But didn't have to pay the entrance because I guess everything is uh, shut down for the, the winter. But quite cool. I had some nice views of Lake Mead itself before, but now we're kind of driving back up in, into the mountains here a little bit. And our next stop is going to be the Electrify America station outside, or just inside of Las Vegas. We don't really need to charge. Uh, I said it was okay for me to drop the car off, like just down, but I just want to check it out and have my first CCS charging experience. So I'll probably just do a really short charge there just to see how it goes. Yeah, just look at the scenery here. How cool is this? So I'm now, let's see, tw uh, 40 miles away from the Electrify America station, uh, just a little bit under an hour. But just absolutely gorgeous scenery out here. We've got a combination of these big mountains, some sort of deserty landscape and uh, the red rocks and canyons and everything here. It's very, very cool. I, I really love the scenery and everything out here in the west. Everything's just so big and wide open and desolate sometimes. But yeah, I just uh, got out of the car for a second and I looked there. Uh, when I was hiking, I noticed a bunch of, I don't know if they're grasshoppers or crickets, but they're pretty big ones and they make this really loud like chirping sound when you get near them. And it seems like they are out in force right now. And there are a bunch of them all uh, collected along the front grill of the car. But the car's doing great. It's uh, heated up even more out here. And the air conditioning is actually nice and chilly. Let me turn it down a little bit. The auto. I found that the auto, I don't know, it seems like it's, maybe I just need to turn the temperature down more. But it seems like it's, maybe it's because the temperature outside is actually not that high but it the sun is just really strong uh, but it doesn't seem like it's running the error as much as I would want it to so I've actually had to turn the fan on a couple of times 
but I'm really enjoying having CarPlay in here and listening to my podcast and music using the various routing and stuff because I needed to use PlugShare to like figure out where the charger actually was and then put that into the navigation here. And, you know, even, even still the navigation built into the car is actually quite good too. I guess I could have figured it out that way. I just didn't really want to be messing with it that much while I was driving. So all going great with that and still just really enjoying this. I have had a great day so far with this car and making me really excited to get my own. So I hope that that happens soon. All right, we are here at Electrify America. And look at this, we got an R1S here, brand new one. I have some questions about that. And an e-tron, a Polestar, and a um, EV6. I'm looking to see if there's a 150 available because there's really no reason for me to be taking the high-powered one, but I think they're all together. Yeah. So these look like, like brand new and newly replaced ones. They are, okay, yeah, so they're, these are all 350s. They're all marked hypers. All right. Chatham one. All right, let's do that. Always a good idea to not to leave the Chatham one in case somebody rolls up in a leaf, which would be unique. Right. Let's get it going. The best start. Here we go. Rivian, how do you like your Rivian? Oh man, I love this thing. Yeah? We're uh, just going, we did a road trip from California to Wisconsin, and oh. now we're headed back. Oh wow, okay. So that's why it's so dirty, right? Yeah, fantastic. But the yeah. Like, car's awesome. Yeah, I, I have, I'm gonna go look at that one. I have uh, the uh, S on order, yeah. but I'm still, I think, almost two years away from getting it. Um, I waited like a year and a day for it. Okay. I had it since like Memorial Day. Yeah. It's been great so Okay. Far. That's not too bad. All right. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, everything I've seen about it is sweet, fantastic. I love it, um, I'm actually renting it, but... Um, really? How do you like it? <laughs> uh, it's very nice. I So I have a, a Model Y at home. Um, I had a three before this. Okay. Yeah. I had a three before the Y. <laughs> um, so uh, I was I rented this while here just to kind of get an idea of it and like, nice. you know, see if we could make this work instead. Um, so it, it seems great. I'm charging. How, how has your road trip been with charging? Has it been an issue at all? It hasn't been bad. I've yeah. had some problems before, but mm -hmm. we haven't really run into much. Like yeah. Cabinets will be down or whatever. Like yeah, this yeah. One, but yeah. I haven't been severely slowed down. By okay. Anything, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, is it? This one looks like it is like maybe brand or not brand new, but fairly new. They're all three yeah, fifties. I think these are the new ones that they're putting in. So yeah. Right? They seem to work it's right. That they're not working. So. Yeah. I think that this one, maybe I'll call or something. It seems like it maybe just needs to get like reset or something. All right. Yeah. Who knows? All right, well, I'm ending up bailing on this because two of the, actually three it looks like, because the other Rivian's not going to, uh, are not charging, so. Uh, I don't really even need it. I'm still at 47%, so. I kind of just wanted to top it up to be nice, but, and to check, check it out, but uh, it's not great. So, only cool thing was that there are two Rivians here. I was talking to this guy with the R1T, and they actually just did a big road trip from California to Wisconsin and back again. And this is the first time they're having like an actual problem with the chargers, so lucky me. Um, but yeah, the R1S also is having an issue, and this, even the station down here on the end with the Chatamo is not working, so. All right, we're gonna get out of here and um, go turn the car back in. All right, well, I'm getting close to turning the car back in, so I'm just gonna kind of wrap it up with my final thoughts on it. So yeah, I definitely like the Mach-E. I think it's um, uh, about as good as I expected and nothing was like surprisingly uh, worse than expected or problematic or anything with it. Uh, overall, I'd say, you know, initial impression was that it wasn't as kind of exciting as I was uh, hoping until I put it in unbridled mode and then it was definitely a lot, a lot of fun. So I uh, definitely enjoyed it, you know, driving through the the um, back roads and through the desert and the canyons and stuff. That was a lot of fun. But um, yeah, I mean, but, uh, from that, um, you know, obviously this is just one experience and uh, I don't want to like draw too many conclusions on 
the charging network and stuff, but um, definitely not optimal. I mean, these look like they're pretty much brand new chargers and three of them are not working. The app doesn't say that any of them are not working and there were three people there all on the phone with Electrify America like trying to get it taken care of and it seemed like it was taking a while. So uh, that doesn't instill a lot of confidence, but uh, could just be this one, who knows. So I don't know, I haven't really made a full on decision yet, but I think you know, on the one hand, I think this is definitely a very viable car. I think um, you know compared to Tesla, there's some, some downsides, like obviously charging network, which I knew going in. Uh, I think maybe the driving characteristics and stuff, um, I don't know, I still, maybe it's just because I'm used to driving a Tesla for uh, four plus years now, but um, just a, a little bit of things here, like between the uh, one pedal driving not being quite as, uh, I guess like usable I'd say here, like I have to go on the brake quite a bit more often. And uh, just sort of like the overall um, acceleration and stuff being just a little bit less um, smooth and exciting as, as the Model Y. Um, you know, th those are definitely some concerns that I have now. But I think uh, driving around today, seeing the range, seeing just how the car actually handles and performs, uh, definitely makes me feel better about it and still excited for mine to be coming in. So we'll see. Uh, it's decisions still to be made on exactly what we're going to do with it. But now at least I know more about it. So with that, I hope you also found this interesting. Hope this was useful in case you are considering or have also bought a mach -E. uh, or if you're just even looking for uh, how it compares to other EVs. And if you did find it interesting, please do uh, give this video a like as it helps other people find it and helps me continue to grow the uh, channel. And also make sure to subscribe for a lot more EV reviews, trips, uh, dumps on news and things like that coming soon too. With that, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.